An, siger i et gammelt ordsprog. Helle Thorning har omfattende forbindelser til international politik via hendes mand Stephen Kinnock, søn af Neil Kinnock, der var leder af Storbritanniens socialdemokratiske parti Labour fra 1983 til 1992 og en god ven af USA's vicepræsident Joe Biden. Stephen Kinnock var direktør for British Council i St. Petersborg, hvor han blev taget for spritkørsel. Ifølge senior officer i FSB, tidligere KGB, der er ingen tvivl om, at britisk efterretningstjeneste bruger konsulatet og andre organisationer til at spionere i Rusland. Helle Thornings svigerforældre har lænset mindst 70 millioner kroner fra EU-kassen. Neil Kinnock har været under efterforskning for sin medvirkning i omfattende milliardsvindel. Gang på gang har han prøvet at lukke munden på bogholderen, der ville afsløre svindlen. This constitution has been for referendums. It has been rejected. So you should respect the no in France and the nay in the Netherlands and in my view start on a fresh call on a directly elected convention with the task establishing a new text, put it for referendum the same day in all states where it's possible. Then you have the verdict of the peoples and then it's clear everyone will have to agree the amendments. In the, in, in the end. Then you have involved the people, so then people will feel satisfied. The decision to make a referendum will change the contract dramatically. How do we make laws in Europe? And no one knows. And if they knew, they would cry, because 85% of all our laws are done by civil servants in secret working groups in the council, prepared by 3,000 other secret working groups in the commission, where Now, where Graham and I, as elected members of Parliament, have absolutely no access. Anders Fogh vil ikke give det danske folk en afstemning om Lisabon-traktaten. Helle Thorning sagde også nej til at høre folkets mening. Men tronfølgeloven, som er fuldstændig uden betydning for den danske befolkning, kom til afstemning og en kæmpe debat udspiller sig i de danske medier. Ved et pændestrøg uden folkeafstemning og med brud på grundloven, banede Anders Fogh og Per Stig vejen for at fjerne Danmark som nationalstat. Fra nu af vil 85 procent af alle love blive lavet af tjenestemænd i hemmelige arbejdsgrupper, som folkevalgte politikere ikke har adgang til. Danmark og alle andre lande i EU vil snart blot være provinser, styret af en håndfuld byråkrater, som ikke er valgt af folket. Straffelovens paragraf 98. Den, som foretager en handling, der sigter til ved udenlands bistand, ved magtanvendelse eller ved trussel derom, at bringe den danske stat eller nogen del af denne under fremmed herredømme, eller at løsrive nogen del af staten, straffes med fængsel indtil på livstid. Ingen af EU's ledere turde give deres folk en mulighed for at stemme om Lissabon-traktaten. Bortset fra Irland, som sagde nej i 2008. I bedste diktatorisk stil blev de nu tvunget til at stemme om igen. Because you shall know that what is published until now, what is signed by the prime ministers, is a text they have never ever read. Never. Why? Because it can't be read. This is not a treaty. This is... 300 pages of amendments to 3,000 other pages of treaties. And you can only read it if you take one amendment by one and then look it up in the existing treaties and insert it. We'll do that job for you, so that you will have a reader-friendly edition that's possible. They have decided in the Council that it's not allowed for any institution in the European Union to print a consolidated version which can be read before it has been approved in all 27 member states. This is a decision. The European Parliament, we agreed unanimously in the Constitutional Affairs Committee that we wanted a reader-friendly edition, a consolidated version, which could be read unanimously. We will not have it. 
because higher powers decided we cannot have it. This is an instruction from some prime ministers. They do not want the text to be read. The order is sign, read afterwards. I'm joined now from Brussels by Margot Wallström, Vice President of the European Commission. Um, your boss, uh, Jose Manuel Barroso, said the treaty isn't dead, the treaty is alive. C can you explain to voters what they would have to do to kill it? I think, first of all, uh, if we uh, are serious about democracy, I think we have to understand why uh, the Irish people voted no. Uh, that must be sort of the first uh, stage and uh, this is uh, what the Irish and uh, what we will contribute to to do until uh, the heads of state and governments meet. Presumably uh, they voted no because they don't like the treaty but your boss is saying it will well, go on. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just asking you what would they have to do not to have it? You're not even pretending anymore. You're pushing ahead with all the symbols of statehood and trying at the same time to lie and cheat with the Irish by giving them a series of guarantees that are not worth the paper that they are written on. Well, I can tell you that many of us in this Europe of Freedom and Democracy group will do all we can to help the no side in that Irish referendum. The future of European democracy rests very heavily on Irish shoulders. You fought, Mr. President, against the Soviet Union. You fought for democracy. You fought for national self-determination. If you continue to ignore the democratic voice of countries like France, the Netherlands and Ireland, then you will turn the European Union back into that very union that you fought so hard against. The fundamental problem here is that many voters throughout Europe think that the EU is an undemocratic imposition. And they don't object to membership of the EU, they just object to the way it's being run and things are imposed on them. And when voters say no, you say, we're going to go on and on and try to find a way to make you say yes. No. And yet more status quo. You supported the idea of shooing in Mr Barroso without there being any sort of proper contest. But it's on the Lisbon Treaty that I was most interested. You ratified the treaty through your own parliamentary chambers without, of course, the thought of giving the people in your own country a referendum to express their opinion. But it's when it comes to Ireland that I really get interested, because you said that you wanted there to be a credible policy for Ireland with their second referendum. And so you produce these guarantees, and here they are, guarantees on the right to life, on taxation, on security and defence. Uh, this document has no legal force whatsoever. It is not worth the paper that it's written on. You are the author of a disgraceful attempt to con the Irish into voting for this Lisbon Treaty in their forthcoming referendum. Of course, you've been supported by Mr Barroso on that. He doesn't ever respect the result of democratic referendums, whether they're in France, the Netherlands or Ireland. He says we must ignore them. We must continue. It's all about power. It's all about him and the EU institutions getting more power at the expense of the member states. I hope the Irish tell you all where to go in the second referendum on October the 2nd, and they just might. European parliamentarians and leaders are not listening to the peoples of Europe, at which 200 of you got up and walked out of the room. Uh, to, just to go back to the point, for the voters, the only voters who've had a say on this treaty, the only ones, the Irish voters, very intelligent, very well informed people, quite a big turnout, they said no, and yet the process still goes on. So therefore, that is absolutely what people mean by the democratic That's deficit. Hvad er så formålet med krigene, terrorpakkerne og indskrænkelser af helt grundlæggende menneskerettigheder, som er blevet implementeret globalt? Folket ville ikke have krig, og politikerne burde arbejde for folket. Hvem kontrollerer politikerne? Hvem ønsker krig og hvorfor? Hvem styrer i virkeligheden verden, og hvad er deres dagsorden? You have to be a finance oligarch. Remember, this is not a society ruled by generals. Not by priests, not by bureaucrats, not by demagogues, none of those, but by bankers. Anders Fogh bliver belønnet for sine forbrydelser mod menneskeheden med en NATO-toppost. Og der er store chancer for, at krigsforbryderen Tony Blair bliver EU's præsident. Hvad er formålet med EU som politisk superstat?
In 1954, the elite of the planet met in secret at the Bilderberg Hotel in Oosterbeck, Holland. The Bilderberg Group would later admit that their mission was the formation of the EU. Once the EU was established, under the guise of trade deals, a North American Union and Asian Union would be formed. The three interlocking superstates form the core of the global government, while the United Nations would serve as a world regulatory and enforcement body over the third world subregions. The Bilderberg Group consists of the heads of all of the managing roundtable groups that steer individual countries. Picture the elite power structure of the world as a giant pyramid with only the elite of the elite 